Hello everyone and welcome back to my new fly career in Microsoft Flight Sim. I'm going to continue flying the DC-3 and we are still in India and this is my planned flight here. Uh, it's just a passenger flight, 25 passengers to Guwahati which is V-E-G-T and it's just a must take off by a certain time. Uh, it does occur to me that I have the C-46 and let's just take a look at the price for it and its capabilities. Um, renting it, this particular livery here, the deposit's only 262. It's much cheaper than the DC-3, and its useful load is huge compared to the DC-3, and its range is huge. It's a bit slower, uh, but it can carry a significant number more passengers, but it, and it's cheaper. And so this might be a pricing mistake on the part of the plane, uh, I mean on the part of Neofly, because that seems pretty cheap. But anyway, I'll pass on that for now. I need more experience with the DC-3. And yeah, let's just proceed with this flight. Probably don't need to carry that much fuel. It's more efficient not to. But it's a two-hour flight, basically. So I'll buy a touch more. And I won't fly this flight live. I hope people don't mind, but I'm not going to go through the startup procedure for this one. Well, it's satisfied with the load and everything. Everything looks good from where I'm sitting. Taxi to the runway and take off. All right, up we go. Ladies and gentlemen, not the most scenic day today. We recommend, however, that you keep your seatbelt. Well, I think I'll climb higher this time, partly because of the weather and partly because of the distance I need to cover with the fuel that I have. Carrying 25 passengers here. Seems like a nice runway at VEGT, uh, 10,000 feet and everything. Hmm, when I turn on the heading over there goes to this heading which is opposite where I want to go <laughs> 200, 223.5 instead of the actual heading that I want to go which is more like 63 so it's not the exact opposite that would make things easier um, maybe just nav will do the heading select I don't know what that mode actually does for me. I mean, it does stuff, good stuff in other planes, just not here. Well, nav certainly seems better. As long as I set the desired heading and then click nav, it seems to work. I'm gonna just have it hold at 10,000 feet. It'll be a little bit lightheaded, but it'll be all right. To be super honest, I don't see any indication of what the mixture is actually doing right now. It doesn't seem to affect my fuel flow at all. All right, a break in the clouds. We're cruising right along here. And right now... Passing close to a town called Gola, which I assume is right over there where those roads sort of meet. Yeah, the fuel mixture doesn't seem to do squat, really. Anyway, we are here at 10,000 feet. I furl back a bit so that we have two hours of fuel. Hopefully we'll get there. <laughs> it depends Depends on the winds and everything. I definitely at this point wish I had packed somewhat more fuel. The ready for takeoff position seems to be with the cow flaps closed on this. Well, anyway, I don't need them open right now. The manifold pressure is sort of ticking, making weird jumps too. 
Maybe the manifold pressure is an actual variation, but it seems to be going to some serious numbers as far as fuel flow is concerned. Like, it's varying by more than a third on the fuel flow. I know, because I've got a fuel flow display on my stream deck. Well, so I don't know super duper what the situation is, but here we continue. Approaching Danbad. Interesting look to the place right here. Sort of rusty, though. Alright, one and a half hours to go. We are passing over the Mayu Rakshi River. So that's that river there. And we're close to a city called Dumka. And soon we will be approaching the Ganges River again. And then we'll be on into Bangladesh. The Ganges meets up with the Brahmaputra River in Bangladesh, I think. And then they have a combined mouth down here, south of Dhaka. And we're going to be crossing all of that on our way to our destination, which is on the banks, I believe, on the Brahmaputra, yes. On the bank of the Brahmaputra is Guwahati. Brahmaputra is an interesting river. It uh, flows out through Bangladesh along with the Ganges, but it actually sort of curves around the the Himalayan mountains. So it, it's it sort of drives its water from the Himalayas in the north and then comes around the Himalayas in order to flow out south of the Him Himalayas. So. According to the GPS, just 1 hour and 29 minutes at this speed. Um, whether I have enough fuel, uh, it depends on which fuel flow I believe. Because it's varying, per engine it's varying between 42 and 60 uh, gallons per hour. That's a big variance. And the reason it's varying is because this manifold pressure keeps varying between 30 and 36. So... Now these levers are shaking a little bit, but not that much. <laughs> it's not the levers shaking that are causing that. I don't know if some setting of the ma of the mixture will make it more stable. I don't think so. Uh, maybe. Maybe that makes it more stable. No, the manifold pressure still wobbles. <laughs> I thought it was stable for a bit, but that was just happenstance. The manifold pressure is still wobbling. So, no, the mixture, mixture does nothing. Alright, and there we indeed have the Ganges River. I continue to struggle with the fuel flow and exactly how much the plane is taking at any given time. The manifold pressure continues to wiggle. This wouldn't be so much of an issue if I had packed a little bit more fuel, but I packed basically what was necessary. Alright, crossing the Ganges and into Bangladesh. All these big rivers converging here should make the landscape very intricate with all the tributaries and little meanders weaving about. And I'm at the Brahmaputra River with 43 minutes to go left in the flight. So there's the river, which will meet up with the Ganges downstream and then exit through the mouth, which is a huge part of Bangladesh. So cruising along at 10,000 feet, 168 knots ground speed, and the manifold pressure still sort of tweaks around. <laughs> but I think I'll have enough fuel to get there. All right, now back over India, 170 knots, 10,000 feet, half an hour left. Uh, fuel's getting low, I mean, as expected. But we continue, 87 nautical miles remaining. And the landscape around here looks like this. All right, we are now 20 miles out and it is time for me to prepare for a landing. Airport runway is 2 slash 20, uh, 20, so I'll try for straight in 
using two. All right, suddenly a bunch of clouds. I guess we're IFR now. Well, we've got all those little nav points. <laughs> That's um, convenient. Oh well, I guess I'm stuck with ATC now. Well, at least we got to take a look at the airport. Here it is. All right, whether you like it or not, I'm descending and trying to land at this point. No, I don't want to climb to 13,000. Okay. Oh, there we go. Oh, runway 20 approach. Oh, golf, golf tangles on the other side. I, there's no way I'm got climbed to 13,000 feet. Calcutta Center Ray Ice Romeo Alpha 412 would like to cancel IFR. Definitely. Ray Ice Romeo Alpha. All right, configured for landing. Let's do this. Okay. Okay, if you say so. All right, made it. Okay, shut her down. Two hours and thirty-six and minutes. For your safety, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened. Bit the longer than the previous ones. Please ensure that you have. Well, if I just turn off the battery, will that? Oh, yeah. Okay, brings up the dialogue. All right. Well, while they're off boarding, let's take a look at Neofly. So, that was that is going to be 174,000. It did deduct uh, some for the loan, right? I have a, a 1 million dollar loan that's now 900,000. I paid 990,000 or whatever. And so, yeah. Lost that much, but we'll gain more than that with this flight. Transporter from dispatch. Okay, it's happy. Completed. Thank you. And we got 227,000 because of the bonuses. So, good times. Uh, that'll be that for this flight. Let's get out of here. And we, I mean, uh, really taking the passengers seems like a good deal because of the extra XP it seems to give because it's one of these captain missions here. But not, not too, I mean, it's more challenging to do the missions that require you to land softly or something like that or... Even the timed missions are, well, in the time, time missions don't really make a big deal. But anyway, we are at 567,000 as far as the plane market is concerned. We have a C-46 that happens to be hanging out here. Not really. Anyway, but that's a thought because they're so cheap. But again, a bit slower. Potentially, I, I, should, I should test that out. Which one is really slower, the DC-3 or the C-46? But certainly the C-46 would carry more load, and uh, it's really cheap for that. But maybe they should fix that. Alright, so for my second flight in this video, I think I'm going to try to land softly. We know how this always works out, but uh, well, that's certainly the most lucrative thing here, right? We've got $195,000 reward if I can land this... Uh, bunch of beer, 3,766 pounds of beer at Gaia, and that's a fairly long runway, that's not a problem at all, and yeah, let's see, let's see if that works out, okay.
200 feet per minute is the limit. And I'll just take as I, I don't want to have fuel concerns this time. So now, okay, okay, now I'm totally full. Okay. So back to the sim. And again, because I'm doing it at a certain time of night, I'm gonna skip the startup procedure. I just want to get on with it. I might have overdone the fuel this time. But okay, we'll run with it. Here we go. Aircrew, be advised, today's fragile cargo is being manually handled onto the aircraft at the customer's request. Oh god, they sound like they're really breaking everything. Sounds rougher than anything I'm gonna do to it. Everything looks good from where I'm sitting. Oh, the weather is great as usual. Well, too bad. <laughs> I'm gonna VFR take off anyway. Well, it's the monsoon season. What can we do, really? Okay, are we good? Okay, yes, fragile. And everything seems to be fine. So, yep, here we go. I do think that maybe the C-46 might be a good upgrade to this, even though it's cheaper. And, well, maybe especially because it's cheaper. It doesn't seem to fly that much slower, and it can carry more, so... Okay. Once the tailwheel leaves the ground, it's tough sometimes. Okay, we're off. Transporter, have a nice flight. Keep the cargo secure. Okay, gear up. And turning around. Target's right there. Not too bad. Still will take about two hours, more than two hours, depending on the wind though. Well, it seems like the weather is sort of cleared up over here at least. That was fairly quick. We're along the Brahmaputra River again. And still climbing. Well, now they're asking me to get to 12,000 feet. I don't really want to go to 12,000 feet. I'm not pressurized. <laughs> um, let me try and request a cruising altitude decrease. Um, let's say by 2,000 feet. No. But all right, we are at 10,000 feet and accelerating. And as expected, it'll take about two hours. It's all about the landing now, really. We've surely got enough fuel. Okay, probably have to pull back here. All right, I think we're in a happy state now, cruising right along. 214 knots right now, not too bad. We've only got a tiny tailwind, about eight knots. It's just that I'm not being very vigilant about my fuel flow since we're carrying quite a load of it. So we are less than an hour away from the target and things are going a little bit faster than I expected uh, so it's probably gonna be a bit less than a two-hour flight ground speed 214 knots which is pretty good and this is the surroundings as we are I think past Bangladesh here uh, well right on the border so about halfway and with uh, 57 minutes left to go 10,000 feet uh, well, 10,000 feet as far as ATC is concerned, even though Sky for Sim says 10,454. So, yep, 
all is well, and of course we still have plenty of fuel. Alright, we are approaching Gaia, and it is time to land. This is how the surroundings look. Interesting cliff, or uh, buttes, I guess, some, some of the hills there. Otherwise, fairly flat around. Really? IFR? Really? I think you're confused. Well, this river right here is the Morhar River. M-O-R-H-A-R. -A -R. We're not too interested in that. Trying to get to a landing here. Land runway one zero gray eyes, Romeo Alpha four one two. Oh. Suddenly, suddenly, a uh, low fog layer appeared. <laughs> suddenly, it's apparent why they were IFR, but it was not indicative. It was not indicated at all before. It was not here. This, this is lies. Well, keeping my eyes peeled for any sign of an airfield. Should be right in front of us. Ah, there we go. Trying to land gently here, taking my time. Is it? Okay, okay. Taxi to parking tail, and shut tail down, down. Engine. Need to be able to steer and everything. Uh oh, we have to loop around. Okay. Okay, just barely keeping on the runway potentially. Well, if there's only gates, I'll take the gates. Well, Gaia Airport, your 3,766 pounds of beer is safe. Just getting a little bit dodgy off to one side on the landing right at the end, though. Alright, cut off. Well, flight time, two hours and three minutes. It took Cargo unloading two hours after all. Stand by, pilot. Airports Authority of India. Well, this must be one of the ones I got from FlightSim.to. Aircraft stress respect bonus granted, 31 XP. Well, that's good. I didn't stress the plane out. Payload realism bonus and everything. All right, let's Transporter see. Transporter from dispatch. The cargo was picked up by the customer. Your mission is completed. Well, up to 791,000 now. I uh, got paid 254000 for that in the end because of the bonuses. So, well, that's a pretty good haul. Uh, let's take a look at the airplane market around here. I was looking for DC-6s before, but if we just check this airport... Um, well, sort of wish I could fly a beaver just a little bit in this career, but that's going a step backwards, really. Slow and has a low load. So, really the only thing in our current range is DC-3. We're not going to be able to get an A320 or a 737 just yet. But, yeah. Also looking for the C-46. Maybe I'll think of just uh, renting one and then having it delivered over to this airport and then picking up from there. Because I think it's cruise speed, it can get to 200. And then its useful load is 19,000, it says, and 41 passengers. So that's a big difference over the DC-3. Still a tail dragger, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's a thought. But, well, I'm here at Gaia in the DC-3, and for now we're uh, pretty good with the money. After all, if we take a look at our loan, we have 904,000 to pay back, and we have 
791000 in cash right now, and that's not including the, the deposit I've already paid. So, you know, we could just maybe one more flight that we could pay off the loan. And then if I want to get another plane, I could get back the deposit to do that. Though probably, uh, if, uh, maybe I'll do a couple more flights with the BC-3 before trying to get the C-46. And then that'll clear the loan and also we'll get the C-46 and then the deposit back. So I'll get the C-46 with the money on hand and then get the deposit back and that'll be nice and clean as far as I'm concerned. So anyway, that's my thoughts as far as things going forward. After the C-46, I would like to get to the DC-6. And then we will proceed from there. Eventually, the 737-600 is the goal. But for now, with that, and with the DC-3 parked here, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.